Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortese. It's time once again to take a look back at the highlights of the week that was on our daily talk show, Barnstable This Morning. For starters, we take you back to Monday, April 12th, our first live episode after the State of the Town Address. We had a chance to learn more about one of the new initiatives proposed in the speech, direct from the man who delivered it, Town Manager John Klim. And uh, in your speech, John, you said that economic development efforts would be, quote, full-time and, quote, much more focused. What do you mean by that? Well, I think that we can do more uh, than we're presently doing and working on a day-to-day -day basis with our business community to find out what their needs are and to find out how local government can assist them uh, in their uh, location efforts or their expansion efforts. And so uh, I am putting together a, a plan. I've worked very closely with folks like Councillor Hank Farnham and others uh, and our growth management department uh, to put together a new initiative that will really... Uh, very significantly step up the, uh, the effort uh, on a daily basis so that we're uh, not guessing what property owners or would-be investors are thinking, but we actually know because we're talking to them on a daily basis. Okay, and you also talked about requesting that the town council support what's called the Barnstable Downtown Initiative. What is that? That's exactly what I just mentioned. It okay. Is an, it, is, it is an initiative uh, where there will be a representative of the town on a daily basis on, on Main Street and the surrounding areas working with property owners and would-be investors uh, to find out what their needs are and how we can uh, assist them uh, in their expansion or location uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, we also have partnered with our friends at Coastal Community Capital who have committed $1.2 million of new money for uh, loans for uh, small businesses, and so we're very pleased about that. Last hey, weekend Walsh. brought yet another weapons-related incident at Puffer Belly's nightclub on Route 28. Fortunately, a decision to beef up the police force around the club prevented what may well have been another shooting. On Tuesday, April 13th, Police Chief Paul McDonald took us back to that what night. Happened, what the officers noticed is, uh, you know, to the far east side of the park, a lot darkened area, there was a whole line of cars. Um, most of the cars were nose in. There was one vehicle there that was backed in, um, and the officers, suspicious was that was arose a little bit. Um, they circled around and came in from the blind side of the vehicle. He observed one subject uh, sitting in the back seat. Um, he had a pair of gloves on, and they could clearly see the butt of a handgun in the pouch directly in front of him. Mm -hmm. um, they then illuminated the vehicle. He quickly took off the gloves. Um, he tried to jump out of the car and see from the officers. Um, they quickly arrested them when they uh, retrieved the weapon from the back seat of the vehicle. It was a fully loaded forty five with a full clip and, and one in the chamber ready to go. Now, uh, Chief, there is a quote that appeared in the Cape Cod Times today from the general manager of Puffer Bellies, and, and I'll read it to you now. It says, quote, they somehow had a feeling that something might be going down and they immediately took action, and who knows what that guy was planning to do with the gun. And the quote continues, but the police were smarter than them, and they were on top of it, and they solved the problem before anything happened. Certainly some high praise from the general manager of the club to you guys, but I I'm wondering how that ended up being the case. How did you know beforehand? Why did you put an extra patrol unit on uh, at Puffer Bellies that night? We get um, information from various uh, sources, um, but one, one source is the... Uh, is the Barnstable is excuse me the Boston Regional Information Center, and we get daily bulletins, sometimes um, several bulletins, of course, a day, and they uh, they they they're sifted through and, and they're funneled into our crime analyst. And what he does, he prioritizes all the information that comes out. And he's looking for anything specific for the town of Barnstable, and then anything specific for Cape Cod. And over the course of four or five days, there wasn't one specific topic, uh, but as he started get getting all the information. He noticed there was a trend, and a lot of it was um, on the additional gang activity up in the city of Boston. There was more, there was more violence. A gang member was shot last Saturday night, uh, a week ago Saturday night, by the Boston PD. Uh, there was some rival, some rival gangs, and they were looking at their entertainment. And we looked, we had, we had going on puffer bellies, and we saw that all the ingredients were there for a potential um, problem at puffer bellies that night. So the command staff got together. We made a very conscious decision to put the additional patrol out there. You know. It's, was the end of the fiscal year, and you know, and that's that's a big decision because it, it cost cost some money. But uh, you know, last thing we want is any shooting at Puffer Bellies, and uh, and I do believe, actually, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, that somebody was going to be shot at Puffer Bellies that night. 
Well, on April 14th, Hyannis Area Chamber of Commerce CEO Deb Converse joined us on Business Wednesday to introduce Cape and Islands Green, a new pilot program designed to encourage and reward business owners for adopting energy efficiency and conservation measures at work. So, tell us uh, why the Chamber decided to get on board with this pilot program and what exactly it is. Well, this is something that is near and dear to my heart. I um, have been doing energy conservation work since the 80s, which probably before puts it was my cool. age right in perspective. You but were doing it before it was cool, though. It, it, was, it was not cool. We just had an oil crisis back then. So, you know, it's something I've believed in for many, many years. And, and it was, it's nice because oh, several of the other chambers came together, including the regional chamber, Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce, and it decided we needed to put together a greening your business kind of program because other places are doing this across the country. And, and it's so important here in particular because our environment is what attracts people. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful what we do with our consumption, basically. So we did start, and it's not really a certification program, it's a self Checklist. We, the checklist goes into things like recycling, things that should be basic to all of our lives, but businesses may lose sight of doing the little things because they're so busy doing the day-to-day -day things. Sure. So we thought we'd make it um, easy for them to do. And it is a marketing opportunity because what will happen as they complete the different levels, um, both Sandwich and, and Hyannis will be putting this, um, it's a sticker type thing. Yeah. It says Cape and Islands Green, so it will say, you know, you completed level one. So it is a marketing opportunity. Sure. And pragmatically, you know, it's, it will help. And on Thursday, money. April 15th, Assistant Town Manager Tom Lynch put on his other hat as our town's representative to the County Assembly of Delegates. He gave us his take on a recent Cape Cod Times editorial in which the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce and the Business Roundtable proposed major changes to county government, including the abolition of the Assembly of Delegates. I think the thinking behind that probably has some level of merit, uh, and I think that the, the idea is to get rid of the town-by-town -town parochialism that may or may not hinder greater regional cooperation. First of all, do you think uh, that parochialism is a big problem in the Assembly right now? Uh, I don't see the parochialism that way, and if I look to, uh, back over the votes that were taken on various issues, um, really we've generally looked at the policy that's uh, being presented, not necessarily the, uh, the interests of individual um, regions. Um, I I've seen a more cooperative and collegial relationship like that among the uh, Assembly. The, the, I think part of their thinking is that they'd be bestowing more power into the executive side, if you will, the, the uh, county commissioners and this new county administrator who would be granted additional powers, mm. and therefore you wouldn't need um, elected members from each town, and they'd, they'd want that, that body then to serve more as a, just to look at the finances of it. So let all the policy questions, are we going to get into, uh, you know, a, a countywide sewering policy, or are we going to, uh, you know, get into uh, regionalizing uh, uh, school systems or things like that have that all developed at the executive side, and uh, and just have the financial aspect to it uh, have input from uh, the towns. I feel right now by having individual representatives from each town, each town, you get more buy-in from the town because mm -hmm. naturally the representatives go and seek from their elected officials or their citizens. What do you feel about that? And I think you get more buy-in uh, by having individual elected uh, representatives at this time. If you'd like to see these complete interviews, every episode of Barnstable This Morning is available to watch on demand at the town's website, town.barnstable.ma.us. We're off on Monday for the Patriots Day holiday, so we'll see you back here on Tuesday for another new episode. Until then, I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.